Joining us now to talk more about the fluctuating markets as well as chief market strategist for BNY Convergex Group, uh, Nick Collis. Uh, Nick, great to have you uh, with us. And we were just talking about this. Uh, you know, this market action that we've seen, uh, you've never seen anything like this. I mean, what's it basically shown you? No, it's showing us that there's so much uncertainty that we can't even pick a direction. I think many investors would just prefer a big crack one day down 8 to 10 percent. And even as wrenching as that would be in the near term, it would at least set a floor that investors felt the bad news was fully baked into stocks. And what's really tough to understand about the last couple of days is these huge swings up and down because we can't seem to make up our mind if things are basically bottoming or still have more to go. Well, to that point, Nick was on our program or on Bloomberg before the downgrade by the S by S&P mm. and you thought this wasn't the end of it after the debt deal was reached in Washington but you did think it was baked into the stock market all week long we've had people who've come on and said there's a buying opportunity but Obviously, there were some people who were saying that before this sell-off that yeah. we've seen. Yeah, it's been a very tough call because, as I also said with the S&P downgrade, there are so many factors in the equation. Not only do you have the S&P situation and U.S. sovereign debt, but you've got the European banks and uncertainty about European sovereign debt. When you put it all in the mix, the irony is the stock market took the downgrade very badly. The bond market ended up taking it extremely well. Because with all Why do you the uncertainty, think that is? Why do you think that happened? You know, I tell you, it's funny because, you know, there's an old military saying the map is not the terrain. The S&P was looking at the map. The market was looking at the terrain. And when it came time to really pick your spots about where to hide, the U.S. Treasury market is still the number one place to hide in terms of maintaining liquidity in your asset base when uncertainty reigns anywhere else in the world. Well, Nick, it's, it's Dominic here. One of the things that we've been talking about a lot with traders on the floor down here is this idea that strategy may not be the best way to approach this anymore because there isn't a real way to formulate a strategy. It's all become very tactical. That is to say short-term, very, very, very short-term moves to pick tops and bottoms in the market. Is there a way that you're advising clients right now to position for this, or is cash the best place to be? Okay, Nick, I know you, uh, you weren't able to hear, hear Dom on this, but basically what he's saying is that, look, this is all just uh, sort of underlined, underscored sort of the short-term nature of this market, right? I mean, uh, is there any way for you to be able to pick through, you know, as, a, as sort of a more longer term, you know, for you to pick through and advise your clients, you know, what are you doing in a market like this when everything's so short-term? Yeah, it's a very, very tough call. I've put done a lot of conference calls with clients this week on this very topic, and I think the consensus among the client base, our client base, is that you have to pick through it very carefully and at the margin try to preserve capital in the current marketplace, which again speaks to that trap rally in treasuries, because not only do we think, okay, if yields are low, you've got to buy stocks, but then the question becomes what stocks and what sectors, and the tough thing about this market has been all the correlation among different asset classes. The 10 different sectors of the S&P are correlated 98% over the course of the past 30 days. That's a really unusual measure that we haven't even seen since the first yeah. crisis back in 07, 08. So, so they are all going down, and gold is going up, and you're watching gold very closely. Yep. You know, some people are wondering at what point do people have to sell gold to cover some of their losses elsewhere? Mm -hmm. What's happening in gold, and do you think people should be buying or selling gold? Yeah, I view gold as a very important tell for European confidence in the European economies and financial structure. You know, when Americans get nervous, they go to cash. They put money in the bank, they buy treasuries. In Europe, gold Gold is really the safe haven, and I think that's a very important sentiment indicator. Really? So you think European buying of gold has been what's driven this price? Absolutely. It's a very different cultural, it's a cultural difference between the two marketplaces. But are you concerned about the level right now? It's a concerning because it shows there's still discomfort with the safety of European banks. And as long as gold continues to rise, I don't believe we can have a bottom in the European market or therefore in the U.S. market. But then do you think that, that others here in the U.S. are going are to keep increasing their cash positions? Yes. Yes. I mean, right now, the risk-off trade still is in the ascendancy. And as attractive as stocks might look on earnings power and a lot of other measures that we look at, there's still too much uncertainty about the macro environment to really wade in with both feet. What we're telling clients is nibble away at the positions that you really like. Nibble away at the sectors that you think are really important and defensive. Okay. But by and large, stay on the sidelines and wait for it to play out. Okay, we hear that a lot, you know, about being on the sidelines and all of this. Nick, thank you. Nick Collis, um, the chief market strategist for a BNY Convergex.